Everyone told me, you know, you're mad, who do you think you are? Well, by the time I was 22, I was a multi-millionaire, and I was still a bricklayer. I was in Norway, I couldn't read or write. And by the time I had got to 29, as you see here, I had failed. I was married at the stage with two kids, just like kids like me. And then what happened was, I ended up losing everything. And I know you're going to go through life now, and you won't realize this. But everyone in life goes through a period of depression. Now at this point in time, I was driven in all aspects of my life. But you know the one thing I had forgotten? It was the people you're looking at at the stage there. It was my family. Now that I look back at it, if I had been more intent on looking after that at the time, then it would have turned out much different. So, from that point of view, I went on, got depressed, tried to take my own life through suicide, and then you know, one day, I told everybody what had happened. And one guy, my father's secretary, came in, and he said, Pat, would you go hill walking? I thought to myself, hill walking, is this man mad? Remember I come from where you are, to this? And now he wants me to go hill walking? So anyway, I went down to Kerry, and that's the reason why I'm in Kerry. I've known Kerry for the last 20 years. And I went up and I climbed for the second time. You all know Karen too, yeah? 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 Has anyone climbed it? Yeah. Okay, good. There's a good lot of you have climbed it. Well, basically what happened is the banks were taking us to court to take our family home. And I kept down. I didn't want to go climbing it. And Karen too was my Mount Everest at the time. It's just as Joanne had said, everyone has an Everest. I thought I was going to die. Can you imagine? I thought I was going to die on Karen too. And what happened is, when I got to the top, I was so excited. This meant so much to me. Do you know what I did? I put out my hand like this, one, one. And I shook your man's hand. And he's looking at me. And he says, what's wrong, Pat? What's wrong, Pat? And I turned around to him and I said, Val, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. Can you imagine the second time on the hill? You know what they all thought? I was a complete and utter bollocks. <laughs> How could someone say, on the second time, on the hill that they were going to climb Mount Everest. Well, since then, I've had lots of Everests. All along the way, I've been to 32 tribes of people. I've been to the top of Mount Everest. Do you know what happens when you get to the top of Mount Everest? Do you know what's going to happen when you finish your exams? You say, what's next? Then what's next came the, summit, came the seven summits. From that bricklayer that sat in his bedroom, looking out the window and drawing a robber in Cork City, I'm about to become the first person in the world to have climbed Everest north and south. 150 expeditions later, now living in Beaufort, overlooking the lakes of Killarney, just in the same county as you. And now at 61, I invite people like you into my home and encourage them to follow their dreams and make them a reality. To win, you need to risk losing. Now, in climbing Everest, just a little bit about it. When I started first, one of four would die. So when I said I was going to climb Everest, they all said you were to die. But you know what I did? Three people survived. So I learned all about where those three people survived and where the persons died. And I went out with conviction and passion, and I climbed that mountain. When you're climbing Mount Everest, what happens is people ask what are the dangers? Frostbite, avalanche, landslides. And throughout the life, shh, you have to conquer all the fears in front of you. And if it's a case you're not willing to take the risks, so therefore I still have all my feet and I'm still alive even though 30 climbers have actually died. Why? Because you plan for it. When you're doing stuff, you have a plan A, plan B, plan C, and you go for it. Well, this is my tent as I go over the summit. Inside is Dr. Claire O'Leary and myself, the first Irish female to have climbed Everest. And we're afraid of what the night has in store because we could die we're in the dead zone. And we made the decision we would go for it. For me, I climbed Mount Everest from the north and the south side. And it's amazing, but you know what it feels like to stand there? You know what actually Everest feels like to stand there? It's the size of your kitchen table at home. And when we arrived at the top, I go, I put my hand into my pocket and 
I took from it the emblem of our country and the symbol of our traditional cultures. And this I held with pride and I took it out and I said, Yes! I'm standing on top of the world! At that point, a moment in the time of history, me and Claire and our unsung heroes, the Sherpa, were the highest people on planet Earth. And here we were, and one other thing I did is I took out the hurley and a slitter. I hit a slitter off the top of the world. I haven't got time to talk much, but 15 people reached the summit, only 11 came back. So therefore, it's a cost. And when you go into danger, when I was in business and I lost everything, I wasn't prepared. Now that I actually do stuff, success is about being prepared. Success is not about ignoring the risks. Success is about knowing the risks and then planning for them. When I got to the top of Mount Everest, you see this picture here? Do you know what? I had 55 expeditions done. Do you know what this girl came along and said to me? She said, what's next? What's next? I told to myself. Is she mad? Then I said, how about we go down to Antarctica? And there we were, and we did, you all heard of Tom Crean, yeah? Yeah? Well, I went out to reenact with Tom Crean, and I put an ad on the paper saying, ordinary men and women wanted for extraordinary expeditions. People like you apply. You know, even down to 22, right, okay? It was 17 year olds. And it said, ordinary men and women wanted for extraordinary expedition, I trained you, and I. And I got two and a half thousand applicants. So on that day, I'm going to show that ordinary people can do extraordinary things. Every single one of you. Yes, you can do it. You, 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 you. You all have your Everest. You all have things that you want to do. Can I ask a question here? And it's not about goals. Does everyone kind of feel they want something out of life? Yes or no? Yeah. Good, good. What I want you to do is I want you to hold that in your mind as I now actually you know, ask you to catch that in your mind and I'm going to tell you how you achieve it. That's the South Pole. And South Pole Claire said, what's next? I was illiterate until I was 30 years of age. I have seven books written now. My last film went down to good Sundance and I think over 32 million people seen the film. It's called The Summit. That's the book there. So I was illiterate until I was 30. My new book is uh, Accidental Rebel. That's just out now. So it's a good present for Christmas. Just to let you know, I'm also a salesman, but it talks about success, fear, f fear, failure, pain, selfishness, because that's what we have to have, passion, victory, death, and reflection. Now I reflect. So my adventures took me all around the world, but you know what my next greatest thing that I want to be? It's to be the best grandfather that I can be. Right? The thing about it is, as I stand here, and I look, all around this room, including Joanne, yourself, Sean, and everybody else, right? We all want something. But we are all mentors. Do you think you're a mentor? You are. Everybody here is a mentor. And I went back, back to my grandmother and she said, You're as powerful as JFK. You know what I said? I am not. You've got to believe. If you don't believe, you won't achieve. If you think you can't, you fucking well won't. So believe that you can no matter what you do. My grandson that you're looking at there nearly died three times before he was born. He was to have his leg amputated when he was two. He was bullied when he went to school. He's only five now. But I just want you to see this. And we have a video? <laughs> what are we? Explorers! He's explorers. Dad! And who else? And Wanda. Yeah. And show me your explorer hat. <laughs> And what have you got? Show the people what you've got. A rucksack. And what else have you got? Look here. Look. look, what's this? What's this? Show the power. Them. What has Jack got? The power. Oh, 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 oh,
missing your point of view, you wanted something, right? But you did fuck all about it. <laughs> right? If you want something, you're going to have to go for it. And I'm going to give you what my mother gave me years ago in relation to allowing me to have what I have today. Do you want it? Okay. Well, listen to this. And if it's a case that you believe in this, you will get it. If you want something bad enough, you have to go out and fight for it. You have to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it. If your life is so lonely and useless without it, and all that you do is you dream and you plan is about it. Oh, sorry. If you have to fret for it, but then you must sweat for it. So go for it with all of your capacity, your strength and tenacity. If you simply go after the things now that you're thinking in your head, no time, God, then you don't need to come up to exams, it all will happen. Do you know what will happen? You will get it. You will get it. Now, have you all thought about what you want? Can I ask you to do me a favor? Can I ask you to stand up? Everybody stand up. Right. Can I ask everybody to catch their fist? Catch their fist. Take it about what you want, I want you to say. Hey, hey.